For every question about mycotoxins, there's an answer, and usually another question. But don't worry, that's why we created the Mycotoxin Minute. Our overview of mycotoxin basics continues with a look at fomonism. So if you're like me and you like complex answers to simple questions, you might just ask, what is fomonism? For starters, we need to be clear about what it is we're asking. There's more than just one fomonism for one thing. Fomonisins are a trio of mycotoxins that includes fomonisin B1, B2, and B3. If the fomonisins were a band, Fum B1 would be the songwriter and lead singer in one. Think Sting and the Police. FB1 accounts for 70% of all fomonisins naturally occurring in contaminated food and feed samples. Fum B2 and B3 account for the rest. They're those other two guys in the band. Where do fomonisins come from? Frequent viewers of the Mycotoxin Minute won't be surprised to learn that the molds most responsible for the production of fomonisins are from the notorious Fusarium family. Fusarium verticillioides and Fusarium proliferatum in particular. Other Fusarium species also have a hand in producing fomonisins. Where do we find fomonisins? Though we've seen it in rice and sorghum, fomonisins most commonly affect corn. The reason seems to be that Fusarium verticillioides is present, and this is true, in just about every corn seed. Just like your least favorite holiday guest, Fusarium overstays its welcome and refuses to leave. It accompanies the plant throughout its growth, meaning that it is also there in ears and kernels. If conditions are wet just before harvest, or if kernels have been damaged by birds or insects, the omnipresent Fusarium can go into overdrive, boosting fumonism levels. This has been known to manifest itself in the aptly, if somewhat disgustingly named, pink kernel rot, though not all infected kernels will show this kind of symptom. Now, you might be thinking, so what? What are the effects of fumonisin contamination? An FDA study has suggested that fumonisins are carcinogenic to humans, perhaps responsible for causing cancer of the esophagus. It can affect the liver, kidneys, and intestines, and has been implicated in defects of the neural tube. In swine, fomonisins can cause problems with the lungs, and in horses, it can even affect the brain. Suffice it to say, it's probably better to avoid fomonisins, which isn't necessarily an easy thing to do. Fomonisins are water-soluble, which means that food processing will not deactivate them. What to do? Well, say it with me. Test, test, test. That's all we have for now. For more about fomonisins and how to test for them, check out rumorlabs.com. Bye.